Rogers, who brought you RuPaul's Drag Race and Million Dollar Listing. This is World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Hi, thanks for joining us. So, you know, we're here to count down the top 10 things that make us go wow. wow. Each week, I'm Fenton Bailey, co-founder of World of Wonder, joined as usual with by with by Tom Campbell. With or by. With, or, with or, and by and through. On top of. Yes. Underneath. Oh, adjacent wait. to. Tom Campbell, Chief Creative Officer, World of Wonder, and James St. James. Hello, darling. Editor of the Wow Report and Literary Sensation. Wow. Uh, we're in our Hollywood Boulevard studio. You can listen to us or you can also watch us uh, almost live on worldofwonder.net slash radio andy so uh, so many things so what's many good on? things on, season of mr mellow fruitfulness tom what have you got at number 10 number 10 i want to start with i love you america sarah silverman's new series on hulu have you seen it i have not have you seen I it i watched <laughs> the first 15 minutes that's it's only a half hour show so well, you're, you're, you're almost know. done uh-huh. um this speaks to my uh, un- unintended theme but it is a kinder gentler no less witty no less smart sarah silverman on hulu it um it, it it begs comparison a little bit with what chelsea is doing on netflix but it's different and it's a hybrid and she talks about it she's so smart she is very she smart is, right? and, and some, she's so pretty and, and she's, she's so, so pretty and she, and she's, she can sing she sings in this <laughs> who knew yes and she sort of talks about it being like this hybrid of sort of late night sketch and whatever she, this is the, the the publicity release which sarah is looking to connect with people who may not agree with her personal opinions through honesty humor genuine interest in others and not taking herself too seriously while it's great to connect with like-minded people silverman feels it's crucial now more than ever to connect with the no. unlike-minded but it now didn't work for ever. oprah uh, so why would it work for sarah it, it, it did it did. It does. It works with Sarah. And, and what were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to say, hashtag now more than now ever. Now more than ever. We're Everything's now it. more than well, ever. It feels right, this time. Right. But it's this hybrid. She kicks it off with this huge production number on a back lot somewhere, which is kind of funny. And it's, it's I guess it's co-written by the people that do Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Oh, those right. People. I love, yeah. So but good. It was sort of funny because she's trying to be, she's trying to like be pro-American and in doing so is, is stumbling in all these politically incorrect <laughs> memes of like I love Russians I love this I love and it's like oh we can't talk about people like that <laughs> um, and she even likes talks to uh, a woman um, about uh, who's famous who I can't remember her name for some reason and uh, she was all like you know let me ask you about black people she goes I do not represent all black you know it was like that whole thing so it's she, she, but it was Retta it was Retta thank yes, you yes I love Retta. Retta and um, so self deprecating then she kind of explains that this is going to change in tone radically from moment to moment, she goes, and there's gonna be uncomfortable moments. She so it's goes, unformat. It's so the format is unformat. It's hybridy, but she's I love like, that. there's gonna be moments. She goes, where That's your sweet. brain, when it's not given exactly what's happening next, it's not familiar, is gonna go someplace else. But you see, that's what I always felt about her humor. I never quite knew whether it was my expense at my expense or not, or whether she was being funny. That, you know, when you're stoned and you're like, <laughs> am I suddenly getting paranoid? You know, that, that sense you don't know where you are. You know are. that feeling? That sort of, yes. And it's very, it's. <laughs> but she said, are you she, being funny like, now? No. Are you, <laughs> I'm going to go you paranoid. paranoid. Are you high right now? <laughs> am I here? You can't tell my hands. <laughs> but I always found that with her humor. It's so brilliant. It's so sharp. I'm like, oh, I don't But she, yeah, she calls herself on it. Right. She tells the audience, you're, you're going to, there'll be moments you don't know where it's going. She goes, right. and your mind's going to want to connect the Dots. She's like, we're better writers than you are, so <gasps> just relax. Right. Uh, that was very, very fair. And she, then, she, but she, the, 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 the big takeaway. The naked thing? The naked man. So she goes, you know, there's, there's, there's old jokes like, oh, this is my first time. I'm nervous. So I'm going to imagine the audience naked. She goes, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to actually have two audience members who are totally naked. A guy and a girl who are not sexualized. They do not have perfect bodies. He, you know, when you're sitting, you're, you're, who knew? But when you're sitting naked on television, your penis tends to crawl back a little bit. It's not the, you know. <laughs> he was really, really adorable. He was, he was a very handsome man. But it, she kept, the camera kept zooming into his penis. penis. And mm. his penis was, 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 was pulling back. Was relaxing. Uh, yeah, it was, it was, well, it was, it was having a day off. And isn't it, it always super cold in television? Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> 
But there was nothing wrong with that. And then the woman had kind of a, you know, a nice, beautiful. Well, she's sitting, and so things, yeah, things are rolling, ri- yes. and things are, right. you know. Rolling. And why was this so uncomfortable? And then she introduces another thing, which I hope she uses, which is this guy Mather. She goes, I know it's a late night show once a week, so I'm gonna. I have, she has a Mather, who's a straight guy in a suit at a desk. <laughs> yeah. It's like when things get too uncomfortable, we're just gonna go to Mather, because then you'll know it's familiar. And he's kind of like, yeah, people like yeah. late night talk uh, yeah. show hosts. So that when things get weird, we're gonna show yeah. a late night talk show host, and you're gonna feel better. But then she has a field piece where she goes to Louisiana, where she sits down. Did you see? Did you get to this yeah, part? Get to this part. She no. sits down. She has dinner with a family that voted for Trump. That um, and, and it's kind of like a a, a, a baby a Mama June, um, a ba- ba- honey boo boo, honey boo boo kind of family. But there's there's 100 percent respect for them. And it reminded me of like when you go and have dinner with a relative or someone that doesn't believe in you. They laugh. They have fun. She listens to them. She checks herself. And it is sort of like, well, at least we've heard each other. And they said to her on the way out, it's nice to meet someone who disagrees with us, who doesn't treat us like shit, who doesn't disrespect us. And she, that, that it's her own family talking to her. No, it's no. just a, a random oh, family. A family, that she went. a random family. But it reminded oh, wow. me when I sometimes go home to see family that I'm know. really nervous about Thanksgiving. <laughs> is your family? a Trump family? Yeah. Oh, wow. But I, I, I do think, you know, there's that whole thing when people vote, you're not going to get the far right, you're not going to get the far left to change, but there are people in the middle, and I'm, I'm hoping so many things are going wrong with the Trump administration that no. if we talk rationally to people, no. they, uh, no. if you talk rationally no. to some people and listen and respect, because the last thing she had on, a woman who used to work for the Megan, for the, Megan was her name, for the Westboro Church. Okay. And she was in charge of their social media, and she had changed. She goes, she's going to profile people who have changed their mind and find okay. out why they changed their mind. And she, the thing she had, she was in charge of their social media, and someone uh, came online, and instead of attacking her, they spoke to her with reason. And those two people are married now. Okay. <laughs> and she's no longer in the Westboro Church. It makes me so, think of the uh, the gay Nazi who just the Nazi who the neo Nazi who just came out as gay, right? And there's a conversation stopper. I think if they haven't figured it out yet, they aren't going to. I, I just don't think right. so. Well, I have hope. I love that Sarah Silverman is taking this approach. Yeah, yeah and, no, I, good for Sarah. And it's on, I think, every Thursday. Thursdays. I Love America with Sarah Silverman on Hulu. New episodes on Thursdays. And she says yeah. there's no format, so it might be totally do- new this I, week. I'm I love that. Yes. I love no, the love idea her. of no format. Yep. You know, the format is no format. Well, maybe we should just throw our format out the window. Okay, so at number two, James. (laughs) At number two. (laughs) Number nine. (laughs) Number nine. I went to go see Happy Death Day. Uh, have you guys heard about this? Yeah. Uh, Happy Death Day is a horror movie, and you know I don't do well with horror movies. I have had <laughs> no. I, I you always got to see them. No, I know it's what you do, do all well the time. Them, but he goes to them. <laughs> no, but I took. You know, I had the doors removed from my closet. I had them come in and take the doors off my closet because I don't like the idea of ser- serial killers hiding in my closet. So I was absolutely. I, I was went with Blake. I jumped and screamed and shouted a lot. Happy Death Day is it's a horror comedy. It's it sort of mixes it in. It's actually um, Groundhog Day, but with a serial killer twist. And every day the serial killer kills her, and she wakes up the next morning and relives the same day again and again until and again. she figures until it until out. Until she figures right. out who it is. And so, oh, very clever. Um, yeah. and, but all the same tropes are there. It's you know she wakes up and the song is playing like it wasn't, in, in, and she walks outside and uh, there's someone asks her to sign something. The sprinklers go on. The car alarm goes off it's the exact same scenario as groundhog day but just with a girl and she's a sorority girl so and she brilliant. goes it really is pretty brilliant and of course it's from blumhouse who make all the horror mo- movies oh, you know so get uh, out paranormal in, activity get yeah. out and of course so you know now on your phone photos from a year ago come come up and mm-hmm. up came a photo and i saw a poster for poltergeist so every year of course blumhouse release a horror film halloween. around halloween friday, it was friday the 13th oh I they think, also did the um the great the purge yes, the, that's one of the yes, other ones yes. they do these really pretty high concept very good the girl in it is pretty funny she's adorable and you really wanted to see her die over and over yeah, at the yeah, beginning. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but also, i know some people like that <laughs> but I, I do want to say that there was a hot men's of the week in there oh. because israel broussard is that she keeps waking oh. up in this boy in this uh, boy's room he was what was he in he was in the bling ring is where mm, i remember him that's, from. oh yes yes he's really adorable mm-hmm. and he just keeps getting cuter and cuter every time and he's the killer him. no he's he's the best he's the boyfriend Bestie. who mm-hmm. sort of helps her figure out that each day kind of naked in bed when she wakes well, up every 
Dan? He starts out as like the nerd that she hates, you know. Yeah, she, she wakes up in bed with this boy, and so he, and then she's trying to get away from him. And then every day they get a little closer and closer until by the end he's trying to help her figure out. Like by the tenth time she wakes up or the fifteenth right. time, he's like going with her trying to figure it out and then at the very end they have this huge like um uh like, have alert. you ever seen no have you ever seen groundhog day and she's like what's that and he's like bill murray she's like i don't know who that uh, is and it's like ha, 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 ha. but i'm figuring <laughs> if i was the writer of groundhog day i would be furious because it really is a very blatant they don't even try to to pretend so they have the groundhog and everything like that the poxipsy poopy thing no. no, they just mention. Right. They, just, they just, they just, they just mention the fact that they've been riffing on it the whole time. There's not oh, an okay. actual. Well, so it's a tribute. It's an homage. homage. Yes, yes, Darling. yes. But anyway, it, it's it's fun and it's scary. And I, there are some jump scares. Then and, and I screamed and shouted and. Yeah, it was really good. <laughs> it sounds to me like you don't have trouble with scary movies. But you have trouble with life because well, you I, take your drawers <laughs> off of your closet. Well, no, I, I have trouble with. I, I'm terrified of. You know, in fact, there was a long time there where I figured that. Um, I, I had this great idea that uh, the uh, someone hiding under your bed is probably a billion to one chance right. that there's someone hiding under your bed. But I figured but, two people <laughs> hiding under your bed would be a hundred trillion to one. So I used to hide under my bed with a knife, thinking that the chances of two people hiding under my bed with a knife would be astronomical. You hid under your own bed? I would hide under my own bed, or I would hide in my closet. Blake, it, security. Could you call <laughs> someone? Like, was was yeah. this... Um, well, no, because people were you up for a long time <laughs> when this happened? <laughs> yes. What's your Halloween costume? Uh, Harvey Weinstein with a... Oh, with, Harvey uh, Weinstein! With, with, a, with, a, with a robe and a potted plant. Okay, so I'm moving on to number eight. Number eight. Horrible Halloween costume. Oh, I didn't realize this. <laughs> you jumped right out of me. <laughs> well, did you right? see? Oh. You've taken my halt. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Well, no, because you saw there was that. Uh, you're going to say it. What? Anne Frank? Oh, no. Do you, did I you see that. the Anne Frank costumes? That is outrageous. Well, here's the, th here's the thing. Okay, so this year, Halloween costume spending is at $9.1 billion. It's the biggest it's ever Give been. Give it back to the kids, And is what every I'm year, saying. the National Retail Federation, they release their top 10 predictions. In 2007, it's interesting, in 2007, nurses and fairies were very popular. Now it's Wonder Woman and vampires and okay. zombies. Vampires still? Clowns, really popular in 2007. Yeah. Still popular uh, in 2017. Probably it this year, Pennywise, will be very big. Right. Sexy so, Pennywise. <laughs> um, did you know, this is fascinating, princesses have been up for kids. Princesses have been number one for 11 years. Well, I would think that would be 100 11 years. 11 years, but now it's, it's drag super queens. heroes. Oh, it's superheroes. Well, drag, drag queens, queens. superheroes. Drag but queens. just think of how many princesses there are. There's like Elsa... Yeah, right. right. So yeah, like Ariel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and now the uh, Cosmopolitan did a sort of compilation of, of gross Halloween costumes. And oh. so I wanted to show you some of them. <laughs> I mean, like, some of them weren't so much gross. They were just sort of, there you go. Here you go. Show that. That's the um, <laughs> rub that's me. the rub me it's genie costume. Oh, my God. That's hysterical. Sexy Aladdin. He's I so cute. I quite like this one. The trouser snake charmer. Oh, mm -hmm. that's is this the same boy who's in all of them? Mm, I, I think don't it know. is. This, uh, oh yeah, hot men's of the week. How about uh -huh. this? <laughs> uh, giant. That's just a nipple. Adult giant boob. That and that's is mm, no. Horrible. What site was this on? It, 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 it was on Cosmopolitan.com. Oh, but uh, but you know, there's the usual racist, sexist, gross <laughs> things like gypsies, princesses, Native Americans, Mexicans, Day of the Dead. But the one. The tampon. Can we talk about the tampon? No. no. So, yeah. No, let's move on. <laughs> and uh, there's even a Megan, Megan Kelly version. Sort of, of a tampon? Mm -hmm. Megan Kelly's tampon? It's not nice, right? No. And in fact, Amber, who works here, was outraged, and she was so good. She said this on her, I picked up from her Facebook. She said, we're taught to be ashamed of our periods to hide it, and now some asshole wants to make a costume about it as if we haven't been shamed enough about it our entire lives. So no, fuck that costume. Don't you well, think? listen, I, I, I honestly believe that it's time to give Halloween back to the kids. I yeah, think right. like, yeah. the, it's like the fact that it's just sexy, creepy, racist uh, outfits. Just it, I just find it like distasteful, and it's like it, I'm over it. I'm tired of it. It was cute for ten minutes in the '90s, but but I'm tired of. We might be getting a little older. And wise, you are just turning so cr cranky <laughs> in your no. old age. Well, no, because I, you know, I used to talk in the club kid days. Like the club kids would not well, dress every up. Every day was Halloween. Exactly.
exactly. Right. But it, for all of September and yeah. all of November, oh. people would say Halloween is next month or Halloween was last month. Ah. So nobody dressed up at all during oh. the month of October because it was like that was amateur night. <laughs> yes, I've heard that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I. What are you? Do you you're going to be Harvey Weinstein? Are you? Are you dressing up? I'm. I'm thinking about it still. Mm -hmm. Well, here's thinking something I found that I think is like rather good. It's called the Dad Bag. Here we go. The Dad oh, Bag. Oh, I did see it's that. A I don't need pack. that. I'm no. wearing one right now. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, it's so depressing I'm because I don't like need it. It's like a fanny it. bag you put in your stomach, and it makes it look like you have a yeah, beer gut. And a beer they come gut, in which, like. Thank God for this book and table, which are hiding all that. Six different styles. There's the Allen, the Derek, the Magnus, the Bobby, the Wolfgang, the Sherman. I quite. I um, like hey, tell us, because um, you, know, you just got your fat freeze frozen. Did oh, it, did I, you... I did for uh, cool sculpting, so yeah, I can now buy a dad bag. But did you pee it all out? Yet? Are you skinny? You know, nothing's happened. My I tummy know. is still numb, and it's still there. I, I think yeah. I'm I've right. heard I, from reliable I'm sources sure. it's not very effective. Right. I'm not sure it's uh, working. So, but you said it was painful. It was very painful, and my stomach is still not. I can't feel that a thing. doesn't sound right. So that, I'm, maybe I'm should thinking look into another that. another month. Going to touch Fenton's stomach all through the broadcast. I can't feel that. I can't feel that. <laughs> okay, time for us to take a quick break. Uh, how many children? Here's our question: How many children have been seriously injured or killed from poisoned candy given to them by strangers during Halloween? In the history of time. Mm -hmm. You're listening to the Wow Report on Radio Andy Sirius XM, and we'll have the answer right after the break. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Welcome back to the Wow Report, our countdown of the top 10 things that make us go wow. wow. Here with James St. James, Tom Campbell, Blake. I'm here. Hi. Blake. Hi. <laughs> And, okay, so our question was, uh, how many children have been poisoned it? by Halloween well, I candy? I think it was, more, it was more specific than that. How many people have actually been hurt Seriously or... Seriously injured or killed. Right, like razor right. blades and apples. From poison right. candy. I think it's all a big myth, right? Yeah, it's it is. It's very, very few. But it's like how five. Few? I'm going to say five. I'm going to underbid and say four. The answer is... Zero. Uh, I came mm -hmm. the closest. But didn't but there wasn't there a scare in the seventies with some razor blades, or is that just an urban myth? And I think it's, it's an urban myth. Yeah, and yeah. in fact, in the cases where I mean, children have been injured in this way, but it always ends up being family members or people they know. Oh, right. right? And you know the the whole idea that um, they were going to put acid or something in your in, in your candy. Remember that there was a whole. You were the hoping. Seven. Well, that, that's a, <laughs> because no drug no drug person ever gives, gives their, their drugs. Drug drug Away. Especially to children they don't know. You're not going like, to see them trip or anything. I know. I like, I what is that. the fun in that? Horrible. So there you go. That's an urban <laughs> myth, and it's one that rears its ugly head each year. Moving on now to number seven. Number seven. In my theme this week of kind of opening your eyes and, and embracing goodness in the world, I went and saw Marshall, the biopic uh, about Thurgood Marshall, who was our first African-American Chief Justice in 1967. Oh, right, sure. It is directed by Reggie Hudland, who's known in, from doing Boomerang and House Party. I follow him on Facebook. He has amazing posts. I re re post him a lot. You know, Thurgood Marshall had this amazing career. Most famous case is probably Brown versus the Board of Education, which led to the desegregation of uh, in, in public schools. And this is... a. Uh, if it's about a case that happened in the early 40s when he was part of the NAACP when it was just starting. And there was a rape of a black chauffeur of a, his white boss, that was the case, in, uh, in Greenwich, Connecticut. And uh, Thoroughgood Marshall goes there. He has, because he's from New York, he's not from Connecticut, he has to have a lawyer sponsor him. Um, there's a gentleman by the name of Sam Friedman, a j practicing Jew, played by Josh uh, Gad. And the judge, played by it's, a, it's got a stellar cast, played by yeah. James Cromwell, uh, oh, yeah. says, Good. "I will not let you speak. Why are you here?" So, um, he, so it was all about Thurgood Marshall, sort of coaching uh, Sam Friedman how to to do the case. And so there's this mentor thing. It's it's like an AMC, uh, It's like a Turner Classic movie 
that you've never seen. Like that's Inherit such a the gem. Wild Wind yes. or something. Yes. And it's it's not like the loudest. It doesn't cover his whole career, but it's it has beautiful, beautiful moments. Um, the the chauffeur who's accused is played by Sterling K. Brown. Chadwick Bosman or Bozeman, excuse me, is Thurgood Marshall. He plays Black Panther in the Marvels. He was Jackie Robinson in that movie. He played James Brown in Get On Up. And Kate Hudson plays the woman who accuses him of raping her. And she's never looked more beautiful. She looks good is in Ford's clothes. good? Because sometimes I question her. She's good in this. She's good okay. in this. How's the movie doing? I, I wasn't really... I wasn't it's really a smallish a... movie. I think it came in 10th last week. That's why I bring it to people's attention. Because yeah. I, I don't know why it came up in my feed and I was like, I really want to see this. Where is it playing? It was at the Arclight. It's, it's, it? it's, okay. in, it's in general open. Huh. And, you know, if you have to wait till it gets on cable, but it's really good. And, you know, I can't help but think, you know, the, the, the NAACP... Um, it's, again, it's, it's, I'm making it sound like it's a documentary. It's this great story it's very accessible there's lots of humor there's a moment where um thurgood marshall shows up at the connecticut train station and he says to john, josh gad's character john Freeman, would, would you help me with my bags and so it's a black man walking with a white man holding bags behind him and it's played for humor because uh -huh. it's supposed to show us like wow that was outrageous you mm -hmm. know and at the time a consensual sex between which is a possibility between a white woman and a black man was unheard of and scandalous and it really should sort of be called marshall and freedom because it's it's about these two people coming together and sort of helped form the NAACP. The, the case is very interesting in, in a procedural kind of way. There's twists and turns. Um, and it also shows uh, something I didn't know, that uh, Thurgood Marshall was friends with Langston Hughes. Oh, oh, I had no idea. Played by uh, Jesse Smollett in the movie. And this is the little scene. On, they're at a club. He's with his wife. Andre Day is singing, I love Andre Day. Yeah. And you also get this idea that, 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 that Thurgood Marshall was like a stud. He like was known, he was famous for what he did, and he and he had this amazing life, this amazing life of elites and Harlem and all kind of stuff, but he would leave time and time and time again to fight these these trials. The good battles. And you almost feel like it could be a TV series of all of his right? trials. It really, I don't know, it just, it, it blew my mind because, you know, you know, I know Thurgood Marshall from being the first, but I don't know the story behind it and he was, it was really well depicted and if you're looking for something good to see this weekend that isn't just bang bang or, or horror, you know, all that stuff's good too, but I would say go see Marshall at the theater. Cool. It's in select theaters nationwide, check your local listings. Which brings us now to number six. Number six. There was a trans film festival here in Los Angeles at the uh, Silent Movie Theater, which is one of my favorite theaters. On Fairfax. Yeah, on Fairfax, yeah. It was um, done by Zachary Drucker, who does it every year. Zachary is a good friend of WOW. Uh, she is on Transparent. She's one of the producers uh, on Transparent. And um, she does a lot of um, stuff with like uh, bringing back Hollywood lawn films and like mm -hmm. The Queen. And she's always she's she's very much about trans history. Weren't you like uh, introducing, weren't you there in another? Well, yes, I was there. I was supposed to be there introducing uh, the RuPaul trilogy, Star Booty from the 80s, and right. I was very excited about it. I had all sorts of facts and figures and note cards and anecdotes and stories about how I met Ru and this and that. And I, I dressed all up and I went there and I got there a little early and I got there in time to watch um, uh, some Myra Breckenridge, and, which was really fun. Uh, uh, and is is it? It was a midnight movie, and as midnight approaches, I go backstage, and Zachary is already on stage introducing it without me, and she starts talking about this other movie, and I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm running on stage, I'm like, wait, I thought this was RuPaul, and it turns out it was the night before, and I missed it. <laughs> you actually jumped on stage. I did. And I was <laughs> this all is like a nightmare. I I have, you know? it's like, <laughs> I'm like, wait, what are you talking about? And it turns, she was like, James, it was last night, you weren't here, and I'm never, I never do that. I am never. I I am very good. I don't miss planes. I don't miss gigs. You thought it was Saturday because you I, asked me for some information. Right, you said I'm, right. I'm doing it Saturday. Saturday. It was just in your mind. It was in my mind. It was actually Friday. But anyway, um, one of the things <laughs> that I did get to watch during this was um, uh, a cockettes. There was a bunch of cockettes. Um, There's a great cockettes documentary. There right? is a great cockettes mm -hmm. documentary. I know they are. Okay, the, co know. the cockettes were a drag troupe mm -hmm. in San Francisco in the 1970s, and their look was very gender fuck. That was how they described it at the time. Gender Fluid. There was beards. There was flowers in their beards, yeah. and uh, some of the famous uh, Sylvester was the singer. Sylvester was a cockat. Um, uh, there's was hibiscus was one of the famous ones. There's a new book about hibiscus coming out. A couple cockats who are living were there talking uh, before the shorts. And um, there's how very many famous, were there? What? How many cockats were there? 
uh, like forty or something. They all lived in a house yeah, right? in like San a, Francisco. Not a cult, but uh, yeah, but they, they were uh, ensemble. Yeah, they, they, they were a, a drag troupe and they did performances. And um, in fact, one of the, the shorts was the only performance that was ever captured on film of really? them in oh. San Francisco, and it's really fascinating to watch. There's a very famous picture that you guys know of. Um, uh, it was on the cover of Newsweek, and it's the National Guards with the riflemen, and a hippie is putting a yes, flower in that's it. That's a coquette. And that was hibiscus. That was you. Are, I had no. And, oh. and, and so that and the name of the book is the boy with the gun or the boy and the flower and the gun or something history. like that. History. That is history. Yeah. Wow. And in fact, they were talking about that, that's and they crazy. were saying that um, it was actually staged, and that wow. Newsweek paid hibiscus to do it, and it like totally ruined Fake everybody. News. Yeah, it was one of those things that everyone in the audience was like, no, because <laughs> you know, like for Doesn't our whole life. Doesn't invalidate it. You know, Werner Herzog always says about enactments in documentaries that they're not reenactments. He calls them enactments because they're all about <laughs> they're all about accessing what he calls ecstatic truth which is better than just regular truth ecstatic yeah. truth because that's something truth. that makes you yeah you, you did you feel ecstasy i want to live my life truth. through ecstatic truths mm -hmm. what, the, the one the one sh short though that i really enjoyed and i think that you would have really enjoyed tom i kept thinking of you they were re doing like a, a satire of trisha nixon's wedding it was 1972 <laughs> and it had just happened right uh -huh. and apparently we don't know this now but Trisha Nixon, when she married, what was his name? Edwin Fox, Edwin yeah, yeah, Cox, yeah. something. Yeah, Fox. Um, it was like the society wedding of the century. It was like akin to the royal wedding in America. Yeah. And uh, the way they did it, the cockheads were like ugly drag. Like you, you can't watch it now without right, thinking. It wasn't about passing. No, no, <laughs> it was not exactly. And they all had beards and really bad makeup. And it's sort of like an old John Waters film. Yes, and it's also a little bit like Saturday Night Live when they had like. Uh, Chevy Chase sure, being the early days. like they aren't even really trying to look like it, right. and so they had this. It was in. They, it looks like a, the set cost about like ten dollars, right? And they have like Elizabeth Taylor, a, a drag queen is Elizabeth Taylor. They have a drag queen as Phyllis Diller, who's there. <laughs> they have the queen and uh, you know Jackie O, and Jackie O comes out and sings a song, and um, then they have uh, Eartha Kitt sneaks in, and she's got a thing of LSD because she still hates everyone yes, yes, yes. from that, and so she pu she pours LSD in the pun and then everyone has an orgy and it ends with Trisha Nixon getting fucked with an, with an axe handle uh, and like it's like you just but it's like just this guy sounds like a great <laughs> challenge for drag race <laughs> when we create it as an acting challenge but it's one of those things that you you look at it and you think my how drag has <laughs> evolved over the years because this really was it, you you think that maybe John Waters was watching these things possibly because right. this is 71 72 yep. and it, he feels influenced it was the yeah, guys. exactly. It's it's fascinating to watch, and if you ever get a chance to see some of these old stuff, what's that one called? That one was um, Trisha. It was just called Trisha's Trisha's okay. wedding. Trisha's wedding. So that's the Trans Nation Film Festival. Trans Trans Nation Trans Nation yeah. Film Festival. But it's only in L. A. Right? It was, yeah, but um, you know, if you, sometimes you might be able to find these yeah, things on YouTube. Everything's accessible or something. these days, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, for number five. <laughs> uh, <laughs> number five. The Open Secret. Okay, it's a documentary, The Open uh, Secret. Yeah, I watched, yeah. And so, I mean, we haven't really talked, you know, it, it's good because we need a break from Hurricane Harvey and all these revelations. I right. mean, for me, the most piquantly grotesque thing, to quote the Hollywood Reporter, was like, you know, the pot plants. Because that's just burned in your the mind. Potted plant. But apparently, it was a cooking pot. So cooking, it's like it's such an interesting Wait, detail. Supposedly, Harvey ejaculated into a potted plant. You're saying it's not a potted plant; it's a pot. Yes, yes. Because Harvey called up the chef, asking him to deny the story, and the chef said, "I'm not going to deny the story because I remember it well, and it was a you you defiled a cooking pot." But that is not the point of my story. Wait one second. Yeah. So you have to rethink your Harvey costume because oh, maybe it'd be a potted plant and a copper well, topped. Anyway, I right, think on. it could have been. Why is it got to be one or the other? It could have been both. I have a I feeling have a he was masturbating in a lot of potted plants. And what's a lot the ecstatic truth? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyway, Michael Muster wrote a column on New Now Next saying, you know, where is the gay equivalent of Harvey Weinstein? I want to talk about the Digital Entertainment Network. I'm surprised he didn't mention it in his piece because this is the story that is partly told in this documentary, The Open Secret. Digital Entertainment Network was ahead of its time before YouTube, and it was a network producing digital content, uh, sort of web webisodes. Right. And in 1996, right. they raised something like 72 million. They had advertisers, Pepsi, Blockbuster, Dell. They were sort of 
pioneers of the very first dot-com bubble, and they were just making shows for digital. I mean, I tried to watch them on my computer, but you it was crashing. before it worked, yeah. so you yes, could never see it. you couldn't it. actually watch them. Yeah, right. there was no platform. There was the no... technology was not up yeah. to speed. But Randy and I did go to a meeting at Digital Entertainment Network, and it was like, it was you walked into this, again, very pioneering. You walked Culver City, you know, Glitter, uh, Silicon Gulch. Yes. You walked in, and it was this sort of giant play environment, and the executive came up to us and said, come into the den and play. And you just felt, oh, I don't know. It just felt, I mean, there were no pot plants around, potted plants, I yes. should say, or cooking pots or things like that. But it just felt weird and strange. Maybe because it was this idea of the office as a play right, space. A play but pen. also, the sort of, it just was something creepy about it. Anyway, Digital Entertainment Network was founded by three people, Mark Collins' director, Chad Shackley, and a young actor called Brock Pierce, who was in The Mighty Ducks or something, very cute. And long story short, they ended up getting accused of molestation. And in fact, they fled to Spain in, in 2000. They ended up doesn't have an extra living extra together. It, they were extradited. Okay. Well, one of them was. And Mark Collins' rector ended up going to prison. So long story short, there, we do have a, a gay equivalent, I guess. And it's in this documentary, The Open Secret, which you can see it's streaming on uh, Vimeo. Vimeo for free right now. And I think you can also find it on YouTube, to tell you the truth. I started watching it this morning. Right. And uh, it starts off and it has like 20 different children talking about their experiences coming yeah. to Hollywood. And every single one of them, they're just adorable little fresh-faced kids. And I didn't, I had to turn it off mm -hmm. because I knew that each and every single one of their stories was going to turn very right. dark and very grim. And it does sort of seem like they're... Is like the, the Hollywood is nothing but nothing but nothing but sexual assault and, and horror shows and it definitely I mean and they say it's not about gender it's not about sex it's not about gay it's not about straight it's about abuse of it's violence exactly yeah. and I think that it's interesting to me just that this story happened and these people made this documentary um, nom, 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 what was her name? Amy Berg who made Deliver Us From Evil a fabulous documentary about abuse in the Catholic Church no one wanted to distribute it. I mean, they've had a terrible time getting the word out there, and no one, it's, until Harvey Weinstein, this was a story no one wanted to touch, and then a dam burst, and, yes. and yet there are some other and aspects of the story no one still wants to well, touch. That's what I'm like, saying. Like, for example, this aspect of the story, yeah. Um, there, uh, Malcolm Gladwell just came out with a book in yeah. which he talks about how uh, when you think that there has been a watershed moment in culture, uh -huh. that it usually isn't what you think. Like like with Obama, you think that there's going to be right. the, the, you're going to be Hillary, you're going to have other African American presidents, that it's just going to be this wonderful breaking of the dam. And, in fact, and yet, there's this actual backlash. there's a backlash, and that factually we probably won't have another African American his, uh, president for a hundred years. You right. know that like that when these things happen. Uh, when Harvey Weinstein happens, you think that this is a great moment and it's going to lead to other things, but in fact, like it, uh, other doors start closing and people aren't going to be talking about it. Right. You know, well, I mean, we will see, but it's uh, the documentary is very upsetting and it is, it is upsetting because you just see these wonderful kids who come to Hollywood. And it's complicated. Yeah. I mean, I, I actually think it's worth watching because in it, one of the one of the people in the in the documentary ended up uh, dropping the charges and uh, actually said that they had lied about the accusation. Mm. So See, it's all like, it takes is one person to lie, and then it's sort of like the, the kids in the, at the nursery school, yes. remember? Yes, M Martin, the, 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 the Martin, most yeah. expensive trial in California And that, that has stopped you know, uh, people from believing yes. other children, and it's just it's a tra terrible situation. So we have to take a quick break. Um, What's the trivia question going to be? Well, mm. I was like, I'm not going to ask about this Good. subject. So I, what item is banned only during Halloween and only in Hollywood, California? <laughs> this is The Wow Report on Radio Andy, Sirius XM. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Welcome back to The Wow Report. L counting down our top 10 things that make us go... Wow! <laughs> I'm Fenton Bailey. I'm here with Tom Campbell, James St. James, and Blake. Hi. Blake. And right next door to our Hollywood adjacent studio, there's a man yanking a chain. Uh, <laughs> Hello. He's making a noise to us. I don't know if you can hear it. Yes, well, okay. Okay, so the question before the break was, what item is banned in Hollywood, only in Hollywood, and only on Halloween? I'm going to say either toy guns or um, caramel apples. <laughs> I'm going to say uh, uh, selfie sticks. 
<laughs> mm, good answer. You know. Do you know you? what it is? I do, but I didn't. What is it? What is it? Silly string. Oh, I did uh, know that. In yeah. fact, they have signs all up and down Hollywood Boulevard. It's it's so a, messy. Only here. Uh-huh. Only here. Let's I guess go someplace probably else. When it, <laughs> probably when it came out in the 90s, it was like a huge deal. No, no, no. Or it, still is, it still was until about five years ago on Hollywood Boulevard. You, I remember coming right. to work, and the whole b- block was covered. Yep, that's right. From noon on Halloween until midnight, it's banned. Which brings us, uh, I can't think of a better segue, to number four, Tom. Number four. Anal August (laughs) is the name of my piece. Now, this is kind of serious and kind of interesting. I live in West Hollywood, have for 20-something years. It was founded, you know, uh, West Hollywood was always kind of a, uh, what do they call it, an un... It, it was unincorporated? an unincorporated place. City? City. It's where, you know, back in the day, it's, it led the Sunset Strip is where they had, like, you know, places with, during the Prohibition. They had booze and gambling. And in, only in 1984 was West Hollywood became its own city. Mm-hmm. And it was founded largely by gay and lesbian people because West Hollywood was this thing. So over the years, you know, people go where the gays go, right? And now it has a very, uh, you know, it has Russians. It has it's yuppies. It's wealthy people. And someone, a 47-year-old straight man, wrote wrote this letter, and I'll read some of it to you, to WeHoville, which is this sort of like, you know, oh, right. thing. Because I'm a 47-year-old straight man born and raised in West Hollywood. I own a home in WeHo, have a wife and a nine-year-old daughter. Back in August, my wife and I were driving with our daughter on Santa Monica Boulevard during the middle of the day okay. when traffic forced our vehicle to stop in front of the Pleasure Chest, the local sex shop on the east side. As we casually glanced over at the store front window facing the street, we noticed an advertisement that filled the giant eight-by-eight-foot wide window with nine gigantic photos of fully naked asses. Some were male, some were female, some were bent over, it's others Hollywood. had lollipops next to them, and some had whipped cream on them, and some had colored sprinkles, the kind that you put on a scoop of ice cream. Written in the center of the banner is giant letters was the announcement Anal August. Dis, 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 dis. <laughs> Our daughter proceeded to point at the sign and asked us, what does that mean? After 10 awkward seconds, my wife and I looked at each other mortified and replied, Nothing, and we drove off. Well, that's their fault right there for teaching their daughter shame. I do. Th- I agree yeah. with that. And so then they went to the city council. The city council went to the city lawyer, and the city lawyer said, nudity alone is not obscene, no nor way. is it bad that's taste. That's, no. Contemporary community standards differ from community to community. In WeHo, those standards are different than they are in, let's say, Topeka. And you must have known that having grown up here. Bottom sir. line, unless the con- <laughs> Bottom line. Oh, I just got that. Ah! Thank you. Um, unless the content is obscene, we cannot regulate it. He responded, the father, I respectfully disagree that the sign is nudity alone. If it were nudity alone, there would be no issue. If it were simply nudity, my daughter would just be, she would point at it and we'd say, oh, those are just butts. The fact that she can read the words anal August made her ask, daddy, what does that mean? Obviously, a sign that strictly says anal August with no nudity is an issue since that could be an advertisement for, or is not an, is not an issue because that could be an advertisement for a special on colonoscopies. He's getting funny. But when coupled with the naked butts, with whipped cream and sprinkles, oh, it takes on a whole different me. meaning. Uh, that, that's one of those things that, like, you know, uh, I know what uh, pornography is when I see it. Uh, you know, uh, and the fact that a butt has some whipped cream on it doesn't make it filthy. It just means it's a butt with whipped cream. Makes it edible. And you can, all you have to say to your daughter is, is we're celebrating the anus in August. Well, it's oh, it's no, August month, It's city. no big deal. Right. Or some people are. We're not. Some yeah, people are yeah. celebrating their butts. But don't don't get caught in front of the pleasure chest. You know the pleasure chest is going to have those things. Well, that was it's traffic. not like having no. like it's not like Denny's had it in their window I agree. or you know McDonald's. It's like this you stopped in front of a sex store. There the word anal was written there. Get, get over it. I, it's, it's, so anal August is a thing. Every August, because I've missed no, it. No, they were just—that's what they, they were. They were just making a front window that said um, anal August and trying to sell butt plugs. Well, and things. I'm going <laughs> to celebrate <laughs> anal August. I'm going to anal sell. August in October. Uh, if, you know what? I just wish every day could be like anal August, so we could have that spirit in our souls. As a parent, and we're running out of time, what would no. you do in that situation? Oh, as a parent, I'd say um, it says, yeah, anal August. It's celebrating the anus. Your your poop hole is a special place, right? Yeah. I mean, like it's like. Do you, I mean, the, the minute you you turn it into a big scary thing is the minute right. they get all freaked out about it. And if you just treat it very calmly and say, well, it is and, what the, it the, is. And you know, the, but at the same time, I suppose it is fraught only in the sense, not in a shameful sense, but in the sense that my kid uh, Nolan. For, for years as a kid, his, he, the, one of the earliest things he said was poo-poo in your butt. And he just used to laugh and laugh. He'd say, poo-poo in your butt. Right, kids love love but it's logical humor. Yes. Art humor. Right, exactly. It's evergreen. It's a gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> and it's kids, always it, funny. kids are the first one who will find that amusing exactly. and funny. Yeah.
I, I just, uh, yeah, why can't we all get along and drive a different route? Or or I think the shaming around sex, the uncomfortability around sex, which is exactly the point in this thing where it's like, what do we say? That leads, to that is, is one insanity. of the avenues to insanity. Just look at ISIS. They're running on the fumes of sexual psychosis. Yes. And on that happy note. James, number three. <laughs> number three. There was an article the other day that just cracked me up. Uh, Ivanka Trump described her punk phase that she went through as a teenager. And I don't know. Okay, see, She's been through it. She's just like us. She says, I wore ripped corduroy pants. Corduroy pants? <laughs> um, her mo- shirts. <laughs> yes. Her mother, Ivana Trump, has a new memoir out called Raising Trump. And she talks about raising those precious children, oh. Eric, G- Eric and Dave- Donald Jr. Jeez. and Ivana. And each... And Ivanka, in in one chapter, Ivanka, she lets the kids come on and tell stories. Ivanka talks about this punk phase she went through in the early 90s in which she describes listening to Nirvana and wearing flannel which shirts. Which, Nirvana is not punk. They're grunge. Right, well, that's true. But, but this is the point right here. She says, um, <laughs> d- during my punk phase in the 90s, I was really into Nirvana. My <laughs> wardrobe consisted of ripped corduroy pants and flannel shirts. One day after school, I dyed my hair blue. What? Mom wasn't a fan of this decision. She took one look at me and immediately went to the nearest drugstore to buy a $10 box of Nice and Easy. That night, she forced me to dye my hair back to blonde. The color was picked out three shades lighter than my natural color, and I never looked back. Okay. Okay, first of all, New York Magazine points out the fact that there is no way to get blue out with it with Nice and Easy. Like, this is, you had to go to to, to the Louis Lacari salon and spend the $1,000, and obviously that wasn't relatable enough. and so right. they were trying to make I- Ivanka into a normal, regular girl. So it was a less than ecstatic truth. Yes. Right. Well, I want to tell you, though, that um, uh, Twitter, of course, had a field day yep. right. with this. Right. And some of the, the responses were, um, <laughs> so good. at most, she had a Sum 41 CD. <laughs> uh, and, uh, uh, one time she wore plaid to the Met Gala. <laughs> uh, she ripped her fishnets getting out of a limo. She accidentally walked into a Hot Topics. <laughs> um, uh, her punk face consisted of listening to Skater Boy by Avril Lavigne and she once listened to Dookie while taking a spin class at the Racket and Tennis Club <laughs> yeah so, that is fantastic I mean they, they are the, the family that keeps on giving comedy goals right? so, but there is nobody less punk than Ivanka Trump no. I mean like literally I, I have a picture here wait let me see yeah the, this girl that's the punk picture no no no, no. The, but this girl has never been punk in her <laughs> life ever it's just one of those funny little stories that I want. Well, you can read the story about the girl who almost screamed her lungs out on the WOW report. You didn't no, really talk about that. No, that was another story that I was going to tell. Yeah. Oh, right. um, no, this, no, this is really, we have two seconds. Hold on, say. This girl, she had punctured lungs, and she went to the doctors. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, like, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. I just was like, wait, no, 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 hold on. Okay. She had punctured lungs, and she went to the doctor, and it turns out that she would screamed too loud in a One Direction concert, and her her lungs collapsed. And that's something that was like one of the, there but for the grace of God, I'd go yeah. I right. because I'm always screaming I at know. one direction. You're screaming right at now. The office. You're <laughs> screaming. Be so, careful, James. It's your help. I worry about. So I got two stories. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> It says here, I'm going to talk about Kelly Wise. Oh. Number two. Number two. I have to say, like Saturday Night Live, often funny. You know, Alec Baldwin yes. doing Trump, etc., etc. Et I think, though. The Kate McKinnon sketch of her doing Pennywise as Kellyanne Conway, I think it transcends a sketch on the show. I think it's I think it is a classic for all time. I think as long as media exists, <laughs> we will come back to this sketch. I thought it was the most brilliant, chilling, <laughs> right on thing I've ever seen. I, I, I mean, did you see it? I did see it. I loved it. You know, can I just say that um, yeah. last season they had Kellyanne and they did from um, uh, Kellyanne. Right, they did a whole um, from Chicago. Uh, from Chicago. And I think that's one of the one the classic name on ones. everybody's, everybody's lips, lips is Kellyanne. Yeah, yeah. Kelly um, yes, but, but, no, no, but Pennywise Kelly the Clown 
what a perfect capturing of the evil insanity <laughs> of this person who lives in a sewer. Hey, Koopy, right? <laughs> what do you want to get a quote? <laughs> yeah, so could you do it? You want to? Do you want a quote? I'll give you a quote. A crazy, crazy quote. <laughs> I'll give you a crazy, crazy quote. And it also spoke with using Anderson Cooper, who we love, but yeah, like how the media c it can't help but be lured into lured it, right? Into the sewer. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It was so good. And uh, I love the, the the way it all began when he finally finds the drain and finds her, and and he's like, "What did you do to your makeup?" And she's like. I toned it down. <laughs> Good. I was. It was. She's it was. So Kate brilliant. McKinnon is a national treasure. Yeah. It wasn't so much funny as it was annihilating. I loved the violence and the sheer assassination-like character. To me, it wasn't funny at all. It was just. It was just ripping this evil person to pieces in a way that they truly deserve to be trashed. I love it. It's funny because this past season they they lost a couple writers, I guess, yeah. over the summer, mm -hmm. and um, some of the writing hasn't been quite as on point as usual. Some of the comedy sketches, but when they do the the Donald Trump and when they do Kellyanne yeah. and, and Jeff Sessions, they are right on point. And, and yeah. those Kellyanne Conway quotes, Hurricane Maria. Did actually blow some buildings back together. What? <laughs> good, right? Uh -huh. Oh, and the one about you know, you know, Tillerson was supposed to have called Trump a oh, moron, yes. and she said no. They were actually sharing a Sunday, and the president asked if he wanted more sprinkles, and the secretary said more on. More on. <laughs> but her delivery is always so dead. So no, so soulfully dead. <laughs> more on. That's what he said. But very, very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Okay. okay. We don't have a quiz, but we no. have a surprise. Number one coming up? We have a surprise number one. As after in, the break. I don't know. Do you know what it is? I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Blake, do you know what it is? Are we I supposed to have meetings you to do? discuss this? No, this, we didn't have one, and all of a sudden uh, we're told it's a surprise. It's a surprise. A blank email. I know what it is, but it's also a mystery. So. Oh, my God. Do we have a resistor of the week? Here, um, we'll reveal the resistor yet. of the oh, week. Go ahead. So, number one, the mystery, and resistor of the week after the break. You're listening to The Wow Report on Radio Andy. I think our, this show has been hijacked by Fenton. You've got to come to the meetings. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Welcome back. Okay, so it's time to reveal the number one thing. I've got to reach into my bag. Give me a second. Number one. Oh, this, is, this is good. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, There's a bag. Know. I wonder how he's carried the bag. This is the number one. Oh. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. It's Oreo it cookies. the <laughs> mystery Oreo the, cookies. We are obsessed with <laughs> Oreo cookies here. This is our... So, I'm sorry. Right. We're going to do a taste test. Well, explain. Okay, so Oreo... You know, we've been doing taste tests here on... They have all their the autumnal Wauerport. flavors yeah, that we tested. Yeah, we've been doing taste testing. I think Oreo ripped us off because they like these are so huge, these are so viral, these are so mega. We Oreo are going to release a mystery flavor, and you can win fifty thousand dollars. You can enter at let me get this right, uh, OreoMystery.com, uh -huh. or text them mystery to five nine five two six before midnight, November thirtieth. Okay, we're, so you've we're got gonna it. win. You got eight. <laughs> we're gonna win. I can feel it. I can feel it. So here we go. So it's all the same mystery flavor. It's all, all the, the mystery same packs. It's the same Part mystery of, oh. flavor. I'm oh, sorry. Blake, do you want one? Of course. Smart. Like, yes. I hope it isn't like dog do or something. What? <laughs> so. Mm. Well, I don't want to say it out loud because I want to win the money. Um, I'm getting a fruity thing. Me too. Right? No, no, I'm getting a minty thing. Mint? I'm getting like a crust toothpaste. It does taste like something mm. medicinally. I like think it tastes like or cereal. It tastes like <gasps> tricks or something. Oh, oh, like a Fruity Pebbles? I have to say, I it's quite delicious. Yeah, I'm going to have pretty, another one. I think it might be Fruity <laughs> Pebbles. I think them. Maybe they've got crack in them because they're so good. <laughs> no, I'm going to say Fruity Pebbles. Mm. Well, interestingly, that's what Pop Sugar is saying. Fruity Pebbles or Fruit Loops. And it's oh, Fruit Loops, yes! <gasps> it's interesting, though, because there's a conspiracy afoot. Because earlier this year, or last year, they released Fruity Crisp Oreos. And I don't think they did very well. So some people are saying, oh, they've just like found a way to get rid of all their backstory. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I totally feel Fruit Loops in here. Mm. Not quite good, though, aren't they? Is it peachy? Mm -mm. I wonder how good they are dipped in milk, then. Mm. Mm. We'll find out next week on the Wow Report. <laughs> <laughs> on the Oreo Report. Mm. Uh, so, moving on, what's on a resistor of the week? I have this. I hope you agree. Oh, Wait, this is a conspiracy you both have and you didn't want to tell me? Uh, well, we just talked quickly before we oh, mm -hmm. on. No. I think it's... You should come to the meetings, James. It should be Larry Flint. 
Okay. Who has oh, yes. offered a hundred or ten million? Ten, million, ten million. Ten million. Ten million dollars mm. to anyone who can provide information that leads to the impeachment of President Trump. And I say here on the air right now, mark my words, yeah. I throw in an, an extra hundred dollars <laughs> on top of that ten million. I did so see ten million one hundred dollars. <laughs> that um, uh, the Onion had um, Donald Trump volunteering to to get the ten million dollars. He was gonna, he was he was going to give him. Uh, Eric Trump will definitely jump on that, right? I think, so, I think yeah. Pennywise the Clown should jump <laughs> in here. And get the, I mean, all joking aside, for. No. Eight seconds. It's like <laughs> I I saw it. I reprinted it. I loved it. I think thank God someone's doing something. Yep. And by me, but we have come to a place. I mean, we've always been here. It's just more blatant. Where what happens if the other side did that? What if it's now like someone's running for president and they offer uh, the Koch brothers offer a hundred million dollars to, to somebody Hillary, who can I thought that's find what some did. dirt. There you go. I mean, right? Has it already started? Oh, it's already happened. All right. That's why we're where we are. Well, we are in a dangerous place, yeah, where where that can happen. I because suppose. Pence and the Koch brothers, he's been taking their billions for— I mean, that, that, this is why the, it's not just the issue of the president. It's also the vice president, and they basically bought their way into the presidency. I think there's no question, right? I think we got to get rid of the super PACs. I really think that, yes, that's— Yes, I think the, you're right. I think that's one of the main problems. That when it's, Since the emergence of the super PAC in, what, the early 2000s? Or whenever it was. Was. Yeah, I really think it's destroyed uh, politics. Mm -hmm. I but don't think anybody needs uh, seven hundred billion dollars to win a race, right. especially if it's a local Tennessee race. You know, I mean, like it's just ridiculous. I think they spent more on the election than they, than people do on Halloween. <laughs> I think uh, I think definitely the more is than they're spending on Puerto Rico right now. But Larry Flint is an amazing oh character in history, right? <laughs> that got dark. He is. <laughs> no, he is, and he did the same. What did he do? He offered a million dollars. To he did something similar. Well, he's done this a lot throughout his career. Yes. He's he's very good at that. I mean, wow. we love him. And who for would know it. that well, this, this raunchy lot. pornographer is such who has, who, a patriotic American? Yeah, he he really is. I mean, he's all about the you know the First Amendment rights. Yep. And he's always been fighting for those rights. Right. On well, since it, the it 1970s. almost killed him, right? I mean, yeah. that's what that's happened. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we should wrap it up. But I just think I have a mm. I think I, I know what the flavor is. Oh, okay, is the flavor of exquisite truth. Oh, well, on that note, stick it's another a one in your mouth. <laughs> yes. If you know of any reason why Donald Trump should be impeached, call 1-800-251-2714 to That's claim your $10 million. Right? If you have proof, or, not, not just well, a yeah. reason, if you have well, a reason. Yes. I've got a reason why. <laughs> <laughs> you need proof. But you're not going to get $10 million. <laughs> Okay, tune in to Big Frida Bounces Back Tuesdays, 10 p.m. on Fuse. RuPaul's Drag Race Revealed Season 7. seven. Yeah, on Logo every Thursday, 8 p.m. And don't forget, Real Estate Wars every Thursday, 10 p.m. Bravo. Bravo, yes. <laughs> and bravo! Can, can I, can I, bravissimo! Benson, may I ask for our, our uh, people who are watching this, um, right on this desk is The World According to Wonder. The World According to Wonder. Which is the history of World of Wonder if for its first 21 to, years. That's right. If you need to read a book, you can buy that book. It's, it's pictures and all about On World Amazon. Of just it's that. perfect for, for yeah. um, getting your Christmas, uh, jump starting your Christmas list. And you could wear it for Halloween. It's practically <laughs> free. Thanks for tuning in to the Wow Report Radio Andy Sirius XM. Listen anytime on the Sirius Radio app or watch anytime on the Wow Report. Same time, <laughs> same place. Next week, are you choking? Are you choking <laughs> on the mystery He's Oreo? There's none left. You beat me into a packet. <laughs> I don't know if you saw on Saturday Night Live during Weekend Update when they did they did a story about this. They did, uh, um, yes, and they said um, that the the mystery <laughs> the mystery ingredient actually, was Gary, and it showed this like janitor. janitor. <laughs> I'm thinking it might be Harvey. Oh. Oh. Hey, until next time, <laughs> go, go out, out and do something <laughs> that makes the world go wow. wow. Bye, Ew. bye. <laughs> I'm having another.